Hey everyone. In this video, we're going to be learning about a new functional group, and we're going to be looking at carboxylic acids. So a carboxylic acid has two functional groups combined into one, essentially. It has the carbonyl group, which is the carbon double bonded oxygen. And then it also has the hydroxyl group, which we saw in alcohols. But when you have both of these two together connected to the same carbon, that's when it's known as a carboxyl group or a carboxylic acid. Now, let's talk about how to name these. For naming carboxylic acids, we use the same rules for naming alkanes, except we're going to replace the E ending with oic acid. And when we number the parent chain, the carboxylic acid carbon is always number one. So if we had a two carbon alkane, this would be ethane. If we had a two carbon chain with a carboxylic acid, it would be ethanoic acid. It's so the E gets converted into oic acid if there's a carboxylic acid group. Now, there are some common names that you should be familiar with, and these are used in common language. So methanoic acid, which is the simplest carboxylic acid, is more commonly known as formic acid. And ethanoic acid, with a two carbon chain, is commonly known as acetic acid. And then if you have a carboxylic acid group attached to a benzene ring, it's known as benzoic acid. And this is both the common name and the adopted IUPAC name. So methanoic acid is also called formic. Ethanoic is also called acetic acid. And if you have a benzene ring, it's benzoic acid. And so some places you may have uh, seen these carboxylic acids before. Formic acid is the main ingredient in certain insect stings. Uh, insect venom, particularly like red stinging ants. So that irritating sensation in your skin after you get stung is from the formic acid or the methanoic acid. And acetic acid or ethanoic acid is what's commonly found in vinegar. So vinegar is about 5% acetic acid in water. So this is acetic acid. Let's do some practice. Give the IUPAC name for the following carboxylic acid. Well, the first thing we want to do is number the parent chain. And we said that number one is always right here where the carboxyl group starts, which makes this number two, three, four, and five. So it looks like we have five carbons in the parent chain. And so we would name this pentane except we're going to drop the E and we're going to add pentanoic acid because it's the carboxylic acid group. And then it looks like we have a methyl group sticking off down here and it's attached to carbon two. So this would be two methyl pentanoic acid. So once again, number the parent chain. Number one is always where the carboxylic acid group is. Use the parent name with the ending oic acid. And then if you have any substituents, put them out front as usual. Let's do a couple more. Give the IUPAC names for each compound. All right, let's do the one on the left here. We're going to start numbering one, two, three. So if I have three carbons in a row, that is rope, anoic acid. And it looks like we have a methyl group right here attached to carbon two. So two dash methyl propanoic acid. Let's do the one on the right. So I see here that this is the parent molecule. That's going to be benzoic acid. Now, when we're numbering the ring, 
we're going to put number one where the carboxylic acid group is attached to. Uh, we're only numbering the carbons within the ring. And so the bromine is attached to carbon three if the carboxylic acid is attached to carbon number one. This would be three bromo benzoic acid. Now, can we draw the structure if they give us the name? So four chlorohexanoic acid. If we wanted to draw this, let's start by identifying the parent chain. So I see hex. Hex tells us that there are six carbons. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm gonna make my carboxylic acid group. And I know there's a carboxylic acid because it says oic acid. So that's going to be number one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then right here, it lists a substituent. Coming off of carbon four, there is a chloro group. So four chloro hexanoic acid. Look like that. So now that we've talked about how to name these, let's talk about some physical properties of carboxylic acids. First of all, this is a very polar functional group. Oxygen is electronegative. And so this oxygen is partially negative. The carbon is partially positive, right? There's a dipole going in that direction. Now, on the other hand, you have an OH, which is also polar and you have a dipole going that way. So both oxygens are partially negative, whereas the carbon and the hydrogen are partially positive because they're having their electrons stolen by oxygen here. And so the polarity of these two groups uh, dictates a lot of the properties of these functional groups, particularly their solubility in water. So the carboxyl group is very polar and it can form hydrogen bonds. If you dissolve it in water, it will form hydrogen bonds with water molecules. And they can form a lot of hydrogen bonds with water molecules. Um, they can form like five different hydrogen bonds because they have the two polar groups. Now, if you have a really long carbon chain, then they become less and less soluble, just like we saw with the alcohols. But for the most part, if they have less than six carbons, they tend to readily dissolve in water because of all this hydrogen bonding. So the general trend is more soluble with less carbons. So less carbon atoms, more soluble. And as you have more carbons, they become less and less soluble. So the next property we want to talk about is the acidity. So why do we call them carboxylic acids? Well, presumably they must act as an acid. And what do acids give off? Acids give off H plus, or they donate H plus ions. That was the definition of an acid that we learned about in chapter 10 any molecule that gives off hydrogen ions. And so a carboxylic acid has this hydrogen ion that it can give away. But in order for it to give it away, somebody has to take that hydrogen. And so in this case, it's going to be water. So when you dissolve a carboxylic acid in water, they can get rid of their hydrogen and water will take it. And so one of the lone pairs on the water, oxygen, will come over and steal that hydrogen. And so instead of H2O, you'll have H3O with a positive charge. And the carboxylic acid is now known as a carboxylate because it's negatively charged. So the carboxylic acid is the neutral form. And the ionic form is known as the carboxyl eight. 
So carboxylic acids give away their hydrogen, which is why we call them acids. Let's see if we can write the balanced equation for the ionization of butanoic acid in water and identify the carboxylate ion. Okay, so let's start with butanoic acid. Bute means four carbons. So one, two, three, four. So there's our butanoic acid. And we want it to ionize in water. So it's going to react with water. And in a reversible process, it will form the negatively charged carboxylate. And we'll have H3O plus. So this is known as the carboxylate ion. And this is our carboxylic acid. Now, it doesn't have to be a water molecule that takes the hydrogen. This is just what happens in the presence of water. If we use a stronger base, like say sodium hydroxide, the same thing occurs. The hydrogen goes away and you have the carboxylate. But in this case, we have a counter ion. We have a sodium metal that is positively charged. And so that positively charged sodium will be attracted to the negatively charged carboxylate. This is what's known as a carboxylate salt. So when you have a metal connected to the carboxylate. And you could do this with sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide or lithium hydroxide. Any metal hydroxide will work. And whatever metal you use here is going to be the metal that's attached to the carboxylate. And the byproduct of this neutralization is the formation of water. The H combines with the OH to make H2O. So your carboxylic acid plus a strong base gives you the carboxylate salt and water. So how do we name these carboxylate salts? Well, you take the name of the carboxylic acid and you replace the ic acid with eight. So benzoic acid, we're going to convert the ic acid into eight. So benzoic acid is benzoate. And if there's a metal cation, we put the name of the metal out front. So in this case, it's potassium benzoate. If it was sodium, it would be sodium benzoate. So put the metal name first and then name the carboxylate by changing the ic acid to eight. And why do we care about these carboxylate salts? How are they useful in everyday life? Well, as it turns out, we use them as food preservatives and flavor enhancers. So one of the main preservatives in bread is sodium propanoate. This is completely non-toxic to us, but for fungus and bacteria, it's highly toxic. And so it stops your bread from developing mold. So that way you can, you know, have a loaf of bread last for a few weeks without going bad. Whereas if we didn't put the preservatives in, your bread would, you know, mold in a few days. Uh, sodium benzoate is another food preservative. We tend to use this one in liquid drinks. So if you look at like, I don't know, like a canned energy drink or a soda, usually the last ingredient on the list will be sodium benzoate. And they add that to stop bacteria from growing in your bottled beverage to keep it, you know, good on the shelf for years. And monosodium glutamate is abbreviated as MSG. And so a lot of you have probably heard of MSG. It's a 
flavor enhancer. So it looks like salt. It's a powder, um, but you add it to foods to give it more of a umami flavor. And so they put this in like uh, instant noodles a lot to make them taste meatier, even though there's no meat in it, but it tricks your tongue into thinking there's meat because it binds to those same receptors. Um, completely non-toxic, just another carboxylate salt that happens to bind well to your taste buds. So this is a flavor enhancer. These two are used as food preservatives. And once you've formed the carboxylate salt, because it's ionic, it's more soluble in water. So these tend to dissolve really, really well, even if they have more than six carbons. Because they're ionic, they have stronger intermolecular forces. They tend to have higher melting points and boiling points. And so these will be solids at room temperature, like powders, whereas some small carboxylic acids are actually liquids uh, at room temperature. Once you form the salt, it's a solid. And so a lot of drugs, like pharmaceutical drugs that have a carboxylic acid functional group are marketed as the carboxylate salt because it's a nice powder that you can press into a tablet as opposed to having like a weird liquid drug. So carboxylate salts, it's the carboxylic acid after it's lost its hydrogen and it's ionically attracted to a metal cation. Let's do a study check. Write the equation for the reaction of propanoic acid with sodium hydroxide and name the final product. Okay, let's start with propanoic acid. Prop means three carbons. So one, two, three. That's my propanoic acid. And we're gonna be reacting it with sodium hydroxide. So plus NaOH, and we know that the H and the OH are going to combine to give us H2O. And what's going to be left over is the carboxylate and the sodium will be attracted to it. And so we would name this sodium propanoate we turn the ic acid into eight and we add the name of the metal out front so this is sodium propanoate whereas before it was propanoic acid so whenever you react a carboxylic acid with a strong base you form water and decarboxylate salt. Okay. So that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching. And next video, we're going to be taking a look at some of these other functional groups.